It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Cleveland Browns and the Los Angeles Rams. Coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the city of Angels, Los Angeles, California. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Cleveland Browns taking on the Los Angeles Rams. Happy to be on hand. I'm Brandon Gunn with Charles Davis. And before we kick, partner, your keys to the game, please. Well, my keys are on the defensive side of the ball for both teams. And the big one, making sure you avoid giving up the big play. These safeties are going to get tested all game long. Their job, keep the ball in front of them, tackle people, make them run extra plays in order to try and score. turn here's Jerome Ford and good coverage there on special teams as he'll get him down shy of the 20 so here come the Browns for their first drive on offense they'll be led out by their veteran QB the former Delaware Blue Hen Joe Flacco remember when the conversation was is Joe Flacco elite well at one point he was elite enough to not only win a Super Bowl but be named the MVP of that game and for a time one of the top paid quarterbacks in the league. Not bad for a young man who transferred to Delaware from Pitt while in college. This guy has had a great career, not many chances now to lead an offense, but still capable if put on the field. They will start this drive with Ford, and he is gonna be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Call it officially a loss of two on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. I thought he did a nice job there setting an edge and make sure nothing could get to the outside. But he decided that wasn't enough for him. Worked his way back inside and made the tackle on the ball carrier. Flacco looks to throw. And incomplete on the deep ball. And that might have been a situation where even though you don't hit on the deep throw, you at least put in the defender's minds early in the game that we're going to press the ball deep against your secondary. And that can have a ripple effect on how they function throughout. Three and out, a real danger here on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 12. Now it's Flacco. And that is incomplete. Not the opening possession they were looking for, especially on the road. No doubt about it, because they wanted to come out and establish a little momentum right away. But now bringing up a fourth down, an empty possession, not what they were seeking. On fourth down, on is Corey Bajorquez to punt. And now it looks like he's in some discomfort after being tackled at the end of that return. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Stafford and the Rams come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And that would complete downfield the cup. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field. 
for a big gainer and a first down. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 38. Play action, Stafford. That'll be caught, it's caught. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. It'll go as an impressive 31 yard gain. It's early, but it now it's a cliche alert here. Big players make big plays. Should I say in big games too? Oh, what the heck. And this defense, they're gonna have to find some way to slow him down as this game goes on. Because when this combination is going good, they can tear your secondary apart. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Stafford. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Oh, they were so close. That close to their first points of the game. Just needed to hang on just a second longer. But he couldn't complete the process of the catch through the jostling from the defender. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. They'll run for the first time here with Kyron Williams. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Kyron Williams, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Rams get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. the touchdown. Here's Marr to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession. Let's see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got to look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. See if they open things up. Let's see what the defense does here, too, after a good stop. Now a run on first down is not going to get off the ground as they will get him behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of three. That's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working. But how about his vision to see where the play was going, crashed down inside, and tackled him for a loss. On second down, Flacco to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Ford. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. Play action. Flacco. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. First and 10, and Flacco looking to throw. Looking left side, that's caught by Moore. Call it a gain of three on the play, and that'll make it second down. Second down. 
Here's Flacco. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. He's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. We know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. They head to the line, facing a third and seven, following the incompletion on second down. They fake the handoff. Now Flacco to pass. He finds his man complete. That's Ford. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes you just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. This is Ford. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. As he's got this down inside the 40 to the 39. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Well, there's an example of patience being rewarded. Ran the ball on first down and got stuffed. Most people would scream, throw the ball here in this situation. They stayed with their roots, stayed with running the football, and they got rewarded. Flacco to throw here on third down. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle is going to be made at the Rams 16. Well, they were in search of a short gain on third down, and they wind up nabbing over 20 yards. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. A red zone first down for Flacco. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. And here you're down in the red zone. You need to be smart, not force anything. So that's a wise decision to just get rid of the football. Second and ten. And right side, they're going to go option here. He will push his way down to about the 14. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. And he is caught. And the Browns are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And coming into this ball game, this was an offense that wasn't just talking about the notion of ball control. They were preaching it. They wanted to win the time of possession battle, and they've done so here. This drive's taken up quite a bit in the first quarter. Now they are set up first and goal. Hunt. He is going nowhere in a hurry as he is going to lose yardage here in a big way. So a loss of five, and it'll be second down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. It's second and goal, back to the eight-yard line now. Flacco. Over the middle, it's complete. Touchdown, Browns! Elijah Moore from eight yards out and the Browns are an extra point away from drawing level well in that connection it looked like they maybe had some pre-play communication maybe one of them noticed an area that was open to the defense to get the pass to when you put the time in sometimes you have that great silent communication that you just noticed right there because the best quarterback receiver combos in the NFL they know how to make those adjustments at the line of scrimmage when they see something pre-play and they got it done there Extra point good by Hopkins, and we are tied at seven. Six. 
So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. The L.A. offense ready to go for their next drive. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent offer a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Off of play action, here's Stafford. Throw left side, complete to Cup. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 27 yards there, a first down. Stafford. He's got his target. It's the tight end, Tyler Higby. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that'll bring up second down. They give it to Williams, running right. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead them to third down. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean, or else they'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. This now a third and four. Here's Stafford. I uh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. I think you could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. This would have been a 54-yard boot had they tried a field goal, but they will not try a field goal. They're going for it. Here we go on fourth. Stafford. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. No luck for the Rams as they fail here on fourth down. And this Browns defense stands tall. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. For the Browns, good starting field position as they have it first and 10 at their own 37. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And strong running there as he's across midfield and down to the 49. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. That was good tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. First and 10 here for Flacco. He's got the connection to Cooper. So the completion good for just three. And it'll be second down. To pass, Flacco. And he finds his target. It's Marquise Goodwin. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. That's the first catch of the game for Goodwin. It's a first down. 
If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. They look to throw on first and 10 with Flacco. And he's got the speedster Goodwin. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. He's been a one-man wrecking crew these last couple of plays. This time, 18 more and a first down. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. You have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. The handoff to Ford up the middle. And good downhill running. He's got six yards down to the 13. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps them advancing the ball. That's to the right side and complete to Njoku. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. 7-7, our score after one. The start of the second quarter, and it's the Browns in control of the football as they've got it with a third down in less than a yard. set of downs and what a weapon to have when you can use your quarterback as a short yardage runner and pick up first downs on first down they'll run with Hunt and he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two yard line Give him three on the game there second and goal what a luxury to have a guy like this who can not only spell your starter but can come in and keep drives going. From the two now, second and goal. Again, it's Hunt. Trying to find a lane, but he finds nothing but defenders. Stop for no gain at the two-yard line. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. They'll try to run with Hunt. And Hunt is not going to get there. What a stand so far defensively. And now that's going to bring up a fourth and goal. This is a long drive offensively. Wouldn't you hate to end this with just three points? Doesn't it feel like during a ball game you have certain narratives going on and there's certain drives that seem to take on just a bit more importance than others? This feels like one of those, doesn't it? To me, three points here, a major letdown. This is the time to go and put six on the board. They'll try to run for it with four. And nowhere to go. He's going to be stopped behind the line. The run is turned away on fourth and goal from the two. And this Rams defense comes up with a goal line stand. And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop them short of the marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. Now a play fake it at Stafford. And that one to the right side and incomplete. And that's the knowledge you gained from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. Now a second and ten.
To throw is Stafford. That'll be caught by Cup. And he gets up near the 25 to about the 24 before going out of bounds. That, I believe, will put him over 100 yards receiving for the game. Yes, it will. And he's got a first down to boot. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. Open man, Higby, the tight end. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Zone coverage here defensively. They're going to let their tight end run a drag across the field. This is where a linebacker gets forced to pass him off. That time, the receiver gets lost a little bit, and he's able to make the catch and pick up good yardage in a first down. Now a first down carry. It's Williams. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. Offense looked a little bit discouraged after that play, shaking their heads a bit, looking at each other. I think they thought they'd get a lot more out of that call. Sometimes you do get the running lane you want, and other times, the defensive front, they just break up the play before it can get going. Play action, Stafford. That's into the hands of 2-2 that well. And yeah, he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. 18 yards on his first catch of the game. It's a first down. Well, certainly as a fan, you get a little bit nervous when you see him make those kind of throws. But they work on that in practice more than we know. And most of them now know their limits and know what they can get away with. And there's a completion right there. So the ball moves from their own 41 to the other 41 here for first and 10. Now Stafford. And that nearly a turnover, but it's incomplete. Oh, fortunate to retain possession there, and it's second down. Partner, so many times in games, we see the most difficult acrobatic catches, whether it's on offense or even interceptions. In this case, this ball's tipped and popped up in the air, and it looks like a chance for a pick. And guess what? For whatever reason, they just couldn't finish the play. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. This will be the eighth play of the drive here. Third and four. Back to throw. Stafford. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Rams first down. He needed five. He got it barely as it will officially go down as a gain of five yards. They've been moving the ball well, but this drive was in danger of stalling out. Fortunately, this is a nice throw here, and they're able to pick up a new set of downs. On first down at Stafford. Underneath, caught by the tight end, Allen. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and it'll be second down. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. Here's second and four from the 24. They'll fake the give. Now Stafford. That'll be caught. It's caught. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. 18 yards that time to push him on first and goal. And another thing that makes a comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receiver's breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. They'll try and run. This is Williams. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Kyron Williams with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Rams go coast to coast and finish the drive off with six points. So his strong first half continues as he finds the end zone here for the second time. And definitely good blocking at the point of attack. And you just have to love watching the way he can create space down near the goal line. And he's able to take it into the end zone. Extra point by Moore, up and good. And that makes the score 14 to seven. following 
Throwing the touchdown. Here's Marr to kick it away. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. And the football going back over now to the Cleveland Browns. And they've got some stuff to build on from that last drive because they moved the football CD and then they tried to go for it on fourth down, didn't convert, probably left a bitter taste in their mouths. I would say so, and I think that they go out in this series determined for that not to happen again. In fact, they don't even want to get to a fourth down opportunity. They just want to make sure they get it done within the parameters that they've set for themselves. Run their offense, get it into the end zone. Yeah, I think a little bit of determination and a dash of anger. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards, so make it second and five. Not a huge play, but I think they're more than happy with how it turned out. Don't be surprised to see them revisit that call because there was a lane there for more than just five yards. Put it in your back pocket and break it out when you need it later. Second and five. Flacco from the gun. found his way into the backfield and he simply would not be denied. Well, they say that life's all about opportunities and that holds true when you're playing defense as well. How about him seeing that chance, making the most of it, did a great job of wrapping him up and bringing him down. The Browns on third down. They've converted four times out of six, not bad. This is third and 17. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Ford. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down. They just said, we've got faith in our tackles. We'll give you the short stuff. And just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. That'll go as a 46-yard punt with a return of seven. And the Rams will go on offense here with a first and 10. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. but. Let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. And because of the ball comes out, but this will get out of bounds, so possession will stay the same. Well, obviously, you never want to fumble, but if you do, good to be towards the sideline and saves them the possession. Saves the embarrassment, saves it going down on the play sheet as a turnover, but I still think it should go to the defense, even if they don't recover it. If you give up the football, you gave up the football. Eh, well, agree to disagree, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell what I played? Yeah, you played defense. Yeah. I'll I let you a, go. I took a shot. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know? Make him make someone miss in the open field. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. Stafford looks to throw again. And this is going to be incomplete. Like what I see so far out of this defense because they've been showing their best coverages on third down. So far, only allowed one conversion on a handful of attempts. One area of their game plan that they've executed to perfection. Decision made for Sean McVay. They're going to go for it. They snap it to Stanford. That is caught. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. The conversion is successful with a sizable gain of 13, and the decision to go for it looks like a smart one. 
So they convert on fourth, and now from just outside the 30, here's first and 10. Now it's Stafford. He'll get this one to cup complete. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. It'll go as a gain of four, and that will bring up second down. They'll fake it. Now Stafford. Allen's got it complete. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. It'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And that brings up third and a full 10 yards. We'll put that one in the win column for the defense. Trying to contain tight ends in the passing game is so difficult nowadays, but they did in a big way there. To the air again, Stafford. Going up top for Cup. And this is Cup. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. Cooper Cup, 31 yards. And the Rams have taken a two-touchdown lead now. The defense is doing their best, but they're struggling right now. They'll look for some help from their own offense to keep them in the game. Mar now to add the extra point. It's good, and it is now 21 to 7. So that drive in total eight plays. And it ends with Cooper Cup on the receiving end of the touchdown pass. the touchdown. Here's Marr to kick it away. Ford now to return it. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And the Browns getting set to go. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. First and 10, and Flacco looking to throw. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Moore. Short completion, just four yards, and it's second down. They run with Ford. And he will be taken down, but a big play there as it comes just as we reach the two-minute warning. 55 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. From the gun, Flacco. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play, one that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. So line of scrimmage still to 39 on second and 10. Now Flacco. He's gotten a Joku over the middle. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. Now they need to get to the 29 if they want to pick up a first here on third down. And so close, he gets it to the one. Out of bounds right there. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, they've looked his way quite a bit in this first half, and with good reason. You can see it there. He has such a handful defensively, just too hard to keep him under wraps. He delivers a big play here for this offense. 
This is first and goal and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. Ford. Sidestepping his way into the end zone. It's a touchdown. Second effort there. He was determined to find pay dirt, and he did. I think that's a great example of what coaches talk about, a back that runs behind his pads, and he uses pads to get him into the end zone. On is Hopkins now for the extra point. It's up and good. This becomes a 21-14 ball game now. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. Get a look at this offense led by Cooper Cup as they make their way back onto the field. Making his presence felt early in this one. First half, already over the century mark. How about the yards per completion, too? That's a pretty darn good number there. Number of catches, but he's shredding defense is getting big yardage with each and every one of them. On first and 10, Stafford. And a quick throw here, that's complete. So they'll get nothing out of that play, and that's going to bring up second down. Pass complete, but no gain. No yards. Yeah. So you file that as unsuccessful. Yeah, you do, don't you? Except on the stats, throwing the ball. Get a completion. You get a catch. Yeah. But still, no, no yardage. Okay. Stafford. He's got Higby complete right side. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. Stafford looking to throw on third and one. A quick throw there is incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. So on fourth down, on is Ethan Evans to punt for the Rams. Returning it is Moore. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and the Browns will take over first and 10. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. They're behind in the first half here, CD, but it's not through any fault of their running back. He's had a strong start to this one. And you're right about that, partner, because watching him play, you would think that his team is in the lead. He has been a lot of fun in this contest. Now let's see if they can actually make something happen and put more points on the board behind his efforts. Yeah, I'm curious to see, Charles, if they can play complementary football and get that passing game going as well. They look to throw on first and 10 with Flacco. That to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. He had no options downfield there and just chucked it out of bounds. There was no one open. He was in the pocket. What was the intentional grounding call? Oh, you wanted the flag. Of course I did. I'm a defensive guy. You know that. Where was the flag? The officials point out that someone was in the area. He got away with one. Now Flacco. That's complete to a speeding wideout Goodwin. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. Oh. 
On first down, Flacco. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. Yeah, he will go out right near the 35-yard line. Ten more there and another first down. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. Throwing here on first down, Flacco. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Now second and three. Here's Flacco. He'll find Goodwin here on the right side. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the five. Call that a very strong gain of 24. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Hopkins' kick is good. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll send you eastward to Orlando, standing by with that EA Sports halftime report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome, everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. These offenses have been in fine form. What will the second half bring us as we are underway in quarter three? And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. And we can look at Cooper Cup as the Rams offense gets ready to take over possession. Seems like the measuring stick for a receiver for a great game is 100 yards. Well, he's well past that now. And as we analyze how he's getting him, that's where it really becomes fun because, let's face it, they keep sending coverage at him, keep trying to put the pressure on, and he finds ways downfield and finds openings. That's a really crafty receiver. Stafford and the Rams come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Has an open man, Skoranek, and he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four. Oh, 
Now a give up the middle to Williams. And they'll stop him after a gain of a couple to the 33. But that's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving a running back a crease to run through. And has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. Now they need two. Here's third down. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. He gets away from one. And he's going to have a Rams first down as they get five there on third and two. Look, we talk about second effort all the time, but in short yardage situations, you'd better have second effort in order to try and pick up a first down. And sometimes as a back, you have to be your own blocker too, don't you? And we talk about running lanes. He made his own running <laughs> lane right there with that power move. They'll stay on the ground with Williams. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, everyone's going to want to touch the football. Be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. Now a play fake it at Stafford. Going to be taken in here by Nakua. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher. Third and six. Here's Stafford. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 41-yard line. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What did the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. On first down, Stafford here. Now that'll be caught by Cup. Flashed the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stopped short of the 35. From the 37, they work on second and six. A shotgun snap for Stafford. That's caught. It's Demarcus Robinson. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 27-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Off of play action. Here's Stafford. Pressure applied, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back at the 33-yard line. Well, Zadarius Smith there getting in and bringing him to the ground. And they tried to go with a little play action there, but nobody on the defensive side bit. Yeah, they adjusted in time and in a big way and ultimately got the sack on offense. Sometimes you're running play action just to set up a certain blocking technique. In this case, none of it worked. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. First down sack, second down negative rushing play. And I will guarantee you right now the head coach is weighing in on his headset to the offense coordinator, whether he thinks it's strategy or he thinks it's execution, because that's going to determine this next play call. Are you staying with what you're doing or are you going in a different direction? And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 13-yard line. Third and 19, no problem as they're able to convert. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. From the third team now, they work on first and 10. That's caught left side. It's Higby, the tight end. So five yards here, five on the play. And it's second down. 
Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches wanted to catch the football first. They'll wind up getting just a yard. And now we've got a third and four. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Well, it's been a tough go for him. These guys have been driving down the field, but defensively, once they got their backs to the goal line, turned up the pressure, that's going to lead to a fourth down. Well played. Now Brett Maher for the field goal try. From the left hash, should be a fairly easy one here. Maher able to put this one through, and they will open their lead up to a touchdown at 24-17. Well, looking at it from a defensive perspective, that keeps the deficit very, very manageable. You know, all things considered, not a bad job on the defensive side. Now, I would say that you pointed out something pretty good right there, and that is you actually have both sides happy with that exchange. You know, happy in quotes, of course. One team, hey, we've kept, kept it within range. The other side saying, hey, we put points on the board and did stretch out the lead. Let's see how this one turns out. Yeah, still bottom line, though. Three points for the opening drive of the third quarter. After the main field goal, Marr back out there to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get involved in the end zone. First and ten here for Flacco. Over the middle, and he's got Goodwin complete. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. Some think that teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. Flacco's throw taken in by Cooper here. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. Second and a couple. How about this? They'll try the option. Left side. Trying to keep those big legs churning, but he's going to go down in the backfield. Yeah, so they get that one, Charles, on the right tackle. Yeah, oftentimes at that spot, you're trying to work against a defender, trying to set the edge in the running game, and you're trying to drive around and get your body twisted so that he can't get there. Sometimes your hands get too involved. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end, a guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Flacco will take to the air again. And that is incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on here to punt it away. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Taking it about the 16. A nice return that time gets 12 yards back. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. And the L.A. offense ready for this next possession. 
And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. And he maneuvers up the middle for three. And it's second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. Williams going to get it again on second down. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. I think what we just saw there, partner, was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see that at times because he filled the gap before the offensive lineman could get to the next level and take him on. Throwing on third down, Stafford. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Partner, the way this offense has marched up and down the field during this game, it's almost a surprise to see an incomplete pass on third down, isn't it? Yeah, they have had their foot on the gas all game long, but here finally stalling out. Here comes the Rams punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Here's more on the return. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And that will come the offense as they take over. Cleveland offense making their way out. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Moore, the motion man right. They will start this drive with Ford. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Nice run defense presented there. And what I mean by that is discipline. Guys filling the right gaps in the right holes. No one over pursuing and making a very nice play. 38-yard line, second and nine. Moore, the man in motion. Again, they turn to Ford. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. Well, Ford, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool him a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool him on that play. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. We've got to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. The Browns send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. This is brought in at the 21. It'll be a 44-yard punt. The return goes for eight. L.A. set to take over again on offense. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Stafford and the Rams come up first and 10, just shy of the 30. He'll look to Williams to begin things. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. So from the 37, here's second down and two. Now Stafford. Got a man over the middle. It's Williams. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. That one a 
first down pickup of eight. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that? Second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. On first down at Stafford. Pass complete there to Nakua. And they'll work this down to the 40 yard line. Tackled there. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Los Angeles. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now, right at the 40. On the counter, here's Williams. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Stafford. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. In for the sack, Miles Garrett. And they visited the end zone frequently in this one, and obviously they wanted another one. But give credit to the defense there. They may not make the comeback, but pride showed good sack on that play. So now Stafford and the Rams after the sack. Now they're staring up at a third and long. They'll set up a throw. That is caught. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. How about that? They weathered the storm of a third and 17 to pick up the first. Pretty good timing. He waited just enough for that post play to develop and laid it right in there. And you know what a lot of teams do when they decide to throw a post route? Because it's a little bit longer developing play. They max protect. Bring everyone in, keep the tight end in, an extra back to make sure the quarterback has time to deliver the football. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Right back to Adwell. That's complete. And the Rams are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Now it's Stafford off the bootleg. This is caught. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. Williams. No signal, and now they say he did not get in. He is stonewalled at the one. He tried to break that plane, but couldn't get there, and that's going to leave him now at third and goal. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Now Stafford. And it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown. touchdown reception and the Rams have opened up a two touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter and well, that's certainly going to bump up the old win probability index because now it's a two score game here in the fourth quarter yeah you're taking me into that deep water now win probability index this game's definitely not over we're not looking at a half percent or something it's just two scores but the way that this team has played to me what I've seen they absolutely deserve to win this game they've been the better team by far throughout Extra point by Moore, up and good. And the lead now up to 14. Following 
scoring the touchdown. Here's Marr to kick it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. first down there but it's incomplete and that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming let alone getting two hands around it hugging it to your body and absorbing the hit even for those big tight ends who you would think can absorb that contact so after the incompletion on first now second and ten operating out of the gun Flacco this short pass into the hands of Njoku Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. The offense on third down, they've hit on half of them. Five for ten. This will be third and six. Now it's Flacco. Over the middle, Amari Cooper. It's complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical. And you figure, may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You've got the first one for the second one to even matter. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. This is Ford. And space tough to come by there as he'll get maybe a yard to the 37th. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. They work now on second and nine. Flacco. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. They'll give him four yards there, and it brings up third and five now. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Now Flacco. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. On the ground, it's Ford. 59 yards rushing for him now to this point. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. From the 44 now, here's second and four. Here's Flacco. Picks up his second sack of the afternoon. They've got up over 30 yards of turf so far, but the sack knocks them backwards. And that interrupts the momentum they were building. Good opportunity for the defense to escape this drive before they get to the end zone. This offense, two for two on third downs on this drive. They're in for a tough test here, though. Third and long. Flacco from the gun. He finds his man complete. That's Ford. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. 
Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw a ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. The Browns unable to move the chains on fourth down. And the Rams get the football in outstanding field position. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. And there is nowhere for him to cut back as he's taken down in the backfield. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. When this offense gathers to watch the tape, they're going to like a lot of what they saw. They put up big numbers, but they might fast-forward through that last play. Oh, there won't be any fast-forwarding, partner. I've sat in those sessions before. You end up spending more time on the bad plays than you do on the good ones. It's just the nature of coaches. But I know sitting in that room, when you've had a big game, the night that they've had, you don't want to hear that. You just want to focus on the good stuff. That'll go for a gain of seven. And now it's third and four. Now a play fake it at Stafford. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to have a Rams first down as he'll be marked out a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that'll make it second down. Now a man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Williams. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game against them, but tally that one on the side of the defense. Do you think maybe, possibly, it could be a little bit of a changer for them? Maybe not a game changer, but a little bit of a momentum one that maybe they can string together some pretty good plays and slow them down. Going there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Now Brett Marr for the field goal try. This to make it a three-score game late. And he missed it. It's no good. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. They'll come up first and 10 here. Flacco. He finds his man complete. That's four. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. Little screen pass, back door to them, and that time worked well for a solid gain. Now Flacco. Under pressure, and Flacco's going to be dropped. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. A big play needed, no doubt. Third and long. 
Flacco. And he's got Cooper on the out route. That's complete. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they stop it prior to what will be an important fourth down. Who wants it more? This is fourth and a yard. They're going to try it. Here's Flacco. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this defense is going to get the football back near midfield, right at the 48. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, yeah, exactly right. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. formation as they take the knee. Here comes the Rams punter now, as he'll come on to kick this one away. And a fair catch called for and made at the 12-yard line. So the L.A. Rams with a victory here. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second-half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they fought at all? that that would be their last point of the game. No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focused on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Southern California.